There are many options available for fall protection. The employer will select the method of fall protection that best matches the hazards of the work area. Guardrails systems are commonly used for fall protection. Guardrails must meet stringent design specifications. The top rail must be between 39 and 45 inches high. Top rails must be able to withstand an applied force of at least 200 pounds. Mid rails must be placed halfway between the top rail and the working surface, and must withstand a force of at least 150 pounds. Guardrails must also be designed so they do not cause cuts or injuries, and should not extend past terminal posts. Covers are used to block holes in floors, roofs, and other working surfaces. They must be able to withstand at least twice the weight of the maximum expected load. Covers must be color-coded, or marked with the word hole, or cover, to provide warning of the fall hazard. Safety nets are designed to catch a falling worker. Safety nets should be installed as close as possible underneath the working level, but no more than 30 feet below. The distance a safety net must extend out from the building depends on the distance from the working level to the net. A potential fall of up to 5 feet requires an 8-foot extension. A potential fall of 5 to 10 feet requires a 10-foot extension. A potential fall of more than 10 feet requires a 13-foot extension. There must be enough space under a safety net to ensure a person falling into the net does not strike a surface below it. Safety nets must pass a drop test. After immediate installation. After a major repair. And at least every six months. Positioning devices allow workers to connect to an anchorage point and work with both hands free. The positioning device must allow no more than two feet of free fall and it must be able to hold 3,000 pounds or twice the expected load, whichever is greater. The purpose of a personal fall arrest system is to safely stop the fall of a worker. A personal fall arrest system consists of four components. A harness. Connectors. Anchor points. And a rescue plan. The body harness is designed to distribute the arresting force of a fall across your body. This arresting force must be limited to 1,800 pounds or less. A connector is a device used to connect the parts of the fall arrest system. Carabiners, snaphooks, lanyards, deceleration devices, and lifelines are all examples of connectors. Connectors must be corrosion resistant, be made of steel, and have smooth surfaces and edges to prevent damaging components or injuring employees. Connectors must have a minimum strength of at least 5,000 pounds. Connecting devices must be double acting and self locking. Connectors must be set up to limit the maximum free fall to 6 feet or less, and prevent contact with a lower level. The personal fall arrest system must be connected to an anchor point. Anchor points must be able to support at least 5,000 pounds, per employee attached. That is roughly the weight of a pickup truck, for each employee attached. Anchor points must be designated by a qualified person. The last fall arrest system component is the rescue plan. The employer must provide for prompt rescue in the event of a fall, or must ensure that employees are able to rescue themselves. Warning lines are designed to alert workers they are approaching an unprotected edge. Warning lines are allowed for work on low sloped roofs, and must always be used with another fall protection system, such as guardrail systems, safety net systems, personal fall arrest system, or safety monitoring system. Warning lines must be erected on all sides of the roof work area, no less than six feet away from the roof edge. When mechanical equipment is used, the warning line system may need to be 10 feet away, depending on the configuration of the equipment. Points of access, material handling areas, storage areas, and hoisting areas, must be connected to the work area by an access path of two warning lines. The warning lines must be flagged at no more than six-foot intervals. Employees may not cross the warning line, unless a worker is performing roofing work in the area. Controlled access zones are allowed for certain types of work, such as overhand bricklaying. 
Controlled access zones are like warning line systems, except that secondary fall protection systems are not required, and certain authorized employees may cross the barrier. Controlled access zones must extend the entire length of the unprotected edge, and must be connected on each side to a guardrail system or wall. Safety monitoring systems use a designated competent person whose sole responsibility is to monitor the safety of employees. They must warn workers when they are working in an unsafe manner. The safety monitor must be on the same working surface and be close enough to be heard by the worker. Employees must follow all instructions of safety monitors immediately. For general industry work on low sloped roofs, the employer may use designated areas. These areas must be marked with a warning line. For temporary or infrequent work, the barrier must be erected no less than 6 feet from the unprotected edge. For other work, the barrier must be at least 15 feet from the unprotected edge. <laughs>